The Palace of Versailles is a royal chateau in Versailles, in the Ile de France region of France. When the chateau was built, Versailles was a country village. The court of Versailles was the center of political power in France from 1682, when Louis XIV moved from Paris, until Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were forced to return to the capital in October 1789 after the beginning of the French Revolution. With that being said, today we will take a look at the history of Versailles. The earliest mention of the name of Versailles is found in a document which predates 1038. In 1575, Albert de Gondi, a naturalized Florentine who gained prominence at the court of Henri II, purchased the seigneury of Versailles and it stayed in the family until the early 17th century when, Gondi invited Louis XIII on several hunting trips in the forests surrounding Versailles. Pleased with the location, Louis ordered the construction of a hunting lodge in 1624. The structure, a small chateau, was constructed of stone and red brick, with a based roof. Eight years later, Louis obtained the seigneury of Versailles from the Gondi family and began to make enlargements to the chateau. Louis XIV had played and hunted at the site as a boy, and had a great interest in Versailles. After he succeeded the throne, he settled on the royal hunting lodge at Versailles, and over the following decades, had it expanded into one of the largest palaces in the world. In 1661 began a detailed renovation and expansion of the chateau. This was done to fulfill Louis XIV's desire to establish a new center for the royal court. Following the treaties of Nijmegen in 1678, he began to gradually move the court to Versailles. The court was officially established there on the 6th of May 1682. By moving his court and government to Versailles, Louis XIV hoped to extract more control of the government from the nobility and to distance himself from the population of Paris. All the power of France emanated from this centre, there were government offices here, as well as the homes of thousands of courtiers, their retinues, and all the attendant functionaries of court. By requiring that nobles of a certain rank and position spend time each year at Versailles, Louis prevented them from developing their own regional power at the expense of his own and kept them from countering his efforts to centralize the French government in an absolute monarchy. The expansion of the chateau became synonymous with the absolutism of Louis XIV. In 1661, following the death of Cardinal Mazarin, chief minister of the government, Louis had declared that he would be his own chief minister. The idea of establishing the court at Versailles was conceived to ensure that all of his advisers and provincial rulers would be kept close to him. He feared that they would rise up against him and start a revolt and believed that if he kept all of his potential threats near him, they would be powerless. For Versailles, there were four distinct building campaigns. The first building campaign from 1664 to 1668 involved alterations in the chateau and gardens. The second building campaign from 1669 to 1672 was inaugurated with the signing of the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle, which ended the War of Devolution. During this campaign, the chateau began to assume some of the appearance that it has today. The most important modification of the chateau was the enclosing of Louis XIII's hunting lodge on the north, west, and south. At first Louis XIV intended to completely demolish his father's palace and replace it with a monumental forecourt. However, in June 1669 Louis XIV decided to keep his father's hunting lodge and the scale of the new rooms was reduced. The new structure provided new lodgings for the king and members of his family. The main floor of the chateau was given over entirely to two apartments, one for the king, and one for the queen. The western part was given over almost entirely to a terrace, which was later enclosed with the construction of the Hall of Mirrors. The ground floor of the northern part of the chateau contained bathrooms, which included a sunken octagonal tub with hot and cold running water. The king's brother and sister-in-law, the Duke and Duchess d'Orleans occupied apartments on the ground floor of the southern part of the chateau. The upper story of the chateau was reserved for private rooms for the king to the north, and rooms for the king's children above the queen's apartment to the south. 
with the signing of the Treaty of Nijmegen in 1678, which ended the Dutch War, the third building campaign at Versailles began and it lasted until 1684. The court had grown during the 1670s as Louis XIV reshaped his relationship with the high aristocracy. To enjoy his favor it became indispensable, to attend Louis, wherever he went, placing a strain on the existing accommodation for courtiers at Versailles. The royal family had also grown sizably, augmented by the legitimization of Louis V children by his mistress Madame de Montespan between 1673 and 1681. As newly forged princes of the blood all of these children required suitable apartments at Versailles. The Palace of Versailles acquired much of the look that it has today during the 1680s. As symbol of France's new prominence as a European superpower, Louis XIV officially installed his court at Versailles in May 1682. Two new accommodations in the south wing were built for the newly legitimized children of Louis XIV and Madame de Montespan. In 1684 construction commenced on the north wing, which would house members of the high aristocracy. Between the two new wings 175 new lodgings were created. Major outbuildings of considerable grandeur in themselves were also built during the third phase, including the Grand Common, the Orangery, the Grand Trianon, and the pair of stables known as the Petit and Grand Ecurie. Grand Common was built between 1682 and 1684, on the site of the old village church of Versailles, St. Julian, east of the new south wing of the chateau. An enormous rectangle arranged around a central courtyard, the Grand Common was a dormitory for members of the king's household, intended to provide 103 new lodgings. The largest and most imposing outbuildings were the two stables, the Grand and the Petit Curie, constructed between 1679 and 1682 capable of housing thousands of horses and the nearly 1,500 men employed in the household department of the royal stables. The grand stable housed the king's hunting horses and hounds, while the petty stable contained the king's carriages and other transport. The third phase saw the reconfiguration of major parts of the grand apartments of both the king and the queen. Louis XIV ceased to inhabit the rooms of his grand apartment, the salons of which were instead used for purposes of state and ceremony. The king's former bedchamber became a throne room known as the Salon de Pollen, while the neighboring Salon de Mercure contained a state bed partitioned from the public area by a solid silver balustrade. The fourth building campaign was possibly a thing because of the influence of Madame de Maintenon and took place from 1699 to 1710. It was concentrated almost exclusively on construction of the royal chapel. In 1701 there were further modifications in the king's apartments, namely the king's bedchamber. With the completion of the chapel in 1710, virtually all construction at Versailles ceased building would not be resumed at Versailles until some 21 years later during the reign of Louis XV. In the next part we will take a look at Versailles during the reign of Louis XV, Louis XVI, the French Revolution and Napoleon. Thank you for watching.